All right, so you know how it is, right? You sign up for some training. You're totally pumped to learn new stuff, maybe even level up those skills, but then it's like nothing. Yeah, the enthusiasm kind of fizzles out. Exactly. Back to the daily grind, and it's like that training never even happens. It's the worst. Right. So what if, now stay with me here, what if there was a way to make training actually stick? Like, not just teach you new stuff, but really rewire how you do things. Now, that would be a game changer. Totally. And that's exactly the mission of this deep dive. We're looking at this expert in training design, real pioneer, and they were tackling this head on, like, decades ago, but it's still so relevant today. What I love about their work is how much they push back against just going through the motions with training. You know, like, <laughs> did people fill out the evaluation form? Did they enjoy the snacks? Did they feel like they learned something? Ah, uh, the dreaded feedback form. The worst. But this expert, they're all about what they call the performance change criterion, meaning did it actually change how someone performs on the job? Results. Exactly. And he uses this analogy that I just love, really drives it home. He says, teaching the wrong thing well, like perfectly, is actually worse than teaching the right thing poorly. Oh, I can see where this is going. Right. It's like, imagine giving someone a completely terrible recipe, but they've got like perfect cooking skills. They follow each step to a T. But the end result is still a disaster. Exactly. And that's what he's getting at with this thing he calls, and I swear this is a real term, corporate goodwill training. It's all about making people feel good, checking those boxes, but not actually leading to real lasting change. Oh, I've been to those trainings. So frustrating. Have you ever been to one of those trainings? Right. Fun in the moment, maybe even inspiring, but then you get back to work and it's like nothing. We've all been there, but that's what we're trying to like help you avoid. It's about getting to the heart of what actually makes a difference in how we work. And a big part of that, this expert says, is simplicity. Oh, tell me more about this, because it's so easy to get caught up in the latest and greatest, you know. Totally. But this expert, they were all about what they call basic behaviors, those core building blocks of any skill. And they say, don't overwhelm people. Less is more. Less is more. Love it. He even has this quote. I think you'll appreciate this one. He says, almost every program would be twice as effective if it contained half as much. It's so true, right? We try to cram so much in. It's like we think information equals transformation. Right. Like just because we've heard it, we've learned it. But how do we actually apply that, right? Exactly. He uses this example of interview skills that I think makes it really clear. Let's say the first skill you want to teach is asking fact-finding questions in an interview. Sounds pretty straightforward, right? Yeah. I mean, you're just gathering information, right? Right. <laughs> but then he talks about what he calls the second order skill. Yeah which takes it a step further. It's not just about asking the right questions. It's about asking them in a way that builds rapport. Ooh, I like that because it's not just about getting the information. It's about how you make the other person feel while you're getting that information right now. Exactly. It's about putting the interviewee at ease, making them feel heard while still guiding the conversation and getting what you need. It's so relatable too, because we've all been in those situations, whether we're prepping for an interview or conducting one, it shows how even seemingly basic skills have these like deeper layers. Exactly. And that's often where training misses the mark. They try to cram in too much at once, too many layers, and it's just overwhelming. But when you focus on those foundational pieces and build on them slowly, you're creating a much stronger foundation. Exactly. You know, it's funny, though, because sometimes it feels like we get stuck even when we do have all the right information. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Knowing something and actually doing it are two very different things. This expert we're talking about, they're big on this idea of the incremental build mm. of skills, which I think gets at this perfectly. Right. It's like we have this instinct to think that just because something's new and shiny, we've magically learned it. We get that initial excitement. But then the real work begins. Exactly. We have to actually put in the reps, practice deliberately, build on those small wins until that new skill becomes almost second nature. It's so easy to get caught up in that initial novelty though, right? Like we check the box, okay, I've been exposed to this new idea, and then move on to the next shiny thing. All the time. And this expert, they talk about the flip side of this incremental approach, which is something they call the results dip. And it's so relatable. Oh, tell me you're gonna tell that recorder story. I am, because it illustrates this perfectly. So picture this, this training expert learning to play the recorder, you know, that wooder flute-like instrument. Oh, yeah, the one that always sounds a little shrill. Exactly. So he's diligently learning, practicing every day, 
and then his teacher gives him a key piece of advice to change his fingering technique. This is like a small tweak, right? Oh no, I bet it sounded even worse. It did. When he first tries this new technique, it sounds even worse than before. And this, my friend, is the dreaded results dip in action. Oof, yeah, I've been there. You're trying something new, you know it's supposed to be better in the long run, but in that moment... You feel like you're going backwards. Exactly. And yeah. it's so demoralizing, right? Because you're putting in the work, but instead of seeing improvement, it's like you're getting worse. And this expert, being the training nerd that he is, he dug into the psychology of it. And he says that in those moments when you hit that dip, your instinct is to just abandon the new thing. Go back to what's comfortable, even if you know it's not the best approach long term. Right. Our brains are wired for that instant gratification. So when we don't see those quick wins, it's easy to give up and tell ourselves, oh, that new thing just didn't work for me. But it's heartbreaking because you were so close. It's like climbing halfway up a mountain and then getting scared and climbing all the way back down. Exactly. And that's why knowing about the results dip is so powerful. Because if you go in expecting that dip, knowing it's probably going to happen, you're much more likely to push through. You can reframe those initial setbacks as part of the process instead of failures. Exactly. It's about playing the long game, focusing on the bigger picture, and trusting that all this effort, even when it feels messy, is going to pay off down the line. It's all about what happens after the training, back in the real world, right? 100%. You can have the most amazing training in the world, but if you don't use those skills back on the job... They're not going to stick. It's like that saying, use it or lose it. This expert, they actually shared the statistic, and it's kind of terrifying. They said there's an 87% loss in learned skills within a month if those skills aren't applied. 87%? That's wild. It's insane. But it makes sense, right? You leave that training all fired up, full of ideas, but then you get sucked back into your routine. Those old habits creep back in. And those new skills just kind of fade into the background. It's like our brains are almost hardwired to resist change, even when we know it's good for us. It's like that saying, the more things change, the more they stay the same. But it doesn't have to be this way, right? No, it definitely doesn't. And this expert, they say the key is reinforcement. It's not enough to just go through the motions of training. We have to be intentional about creating the conditions where those new skills can actually take root. So how do we do that? This expert says the most important question in training design isn't what do we want people to learn, but how do we reinforce that behavior until it brings results. That's such a good point. Because it's not just about the information itself, it's about how we support people in actually using that information. Exactly. And it's not just on the company or the trainers to provide that support, it's on each of us as learners too. We've got to actively look for those opportunities to practice those new skills, to use what we've learned in the real world, to get feedback and make those adjustments. It's like having a workout buddy. It's so much easier to stay motivated and on track when you've got someone in your corner. Totally. It's like that recorder player we were talking about hitting that results dip and feeling discouraged. If they don't have someone there to cheer them on, to remind them why they're putting in all that work. They're probably going to give up. Exactly. We need that reminder sometimes that those struggles, those initial setbacks, they're not a sign of failure. They're actually a sign that we're on the right track. It's like growing pains. Exactly. It all goes back to this idea of designing training with the learner's experience in mind. Uh -huh. right? It's not just about the information. It's about creating that environment of support, that sense of camaraderie. It's like, yeah, training can be fun. It shouldn't feel like a chore or something we dread. Totally. When we feel supported and encouraged, it makes taking those risks, stretching ourselves, trying new things, a lot less intimidating. Because at the end of the day, isn't that what it's all about? This journey of becoming better, more skilled versions of ourselves? Absolutely. And it takes effort, it takes dedication, and it definitely takes a willingness to embrace those bumps in the road. It's not always easy, but it's so worth it. And the best part is, now that we know about things like the results dip, the importance of reinforcement, those sneaky ways our brains try to resist change. We're better equipped to handle it. We're not going in blind. Exactly. So as we wrap up this deep dive, I want to leave you with this question. What one small action will you take to actually apply what we've been talking about? What's one tiny step you can take today to reinforce what you've learned? Maybe it's sharing one key takeaway from this deep dive with a colleague. Maybe it's committing to practicing one new skill this week. It doesn't have to be huge. Just start somewhere. Take that first step. Remember, learning is a journey. And like any good journey, it's off of those unexpected detours and challenges that lead to the most rewarding discoveries. Love that. 
Well said. Thanks for joining us for this deep dive. My pleasure. Until next time.